Common colds that people have had are due to coronaviruses. Generally speaking, they have not uh, proven to be uh, uh, extremely uh, fatal. However, what we're dealing with now, the novel coronavirus, COVID-20, uh, this is not a natural coronavirus. This is a genetically engineered, weaponized version of coronavirus that has been married to four genes from HIV and probably other genes from perhaps other uh, viral pathogens. The short history is Dr. Lieber of Harvard University the chief biomolecular uh, scientist at Harvard University, dug up some frozen bodies from the tundra in Alaska. This was maybe three or four years ago uh, to investigate what killed them during the Spanish flu epidemic. He isolated that virus from 100 years ago uh, and resurrected it, you could say, uh, but found out that because of the frozen conditions over time, the virus had lost its infectivity. You may question, why would somebody dig up a virus that killed over 100 million people and brought an end to World War I? Uh, well, you would have to ask Dr. Lieber that. But he did that, and then when the infectivity was not what he wanted, then he paired it with four genes from HIV uh, and perhaps some other things. And now you have a highly contagious coronavirus uh, that is infecting human beings. And not only from animal to human transmission, but now verified cases, human to human transmission through the air. So you could say that this coronavirus 2020 is the descendant of the MERS virus, the Middle Eastern respiratory virus that killed many people in the Middle East, and the SARS virus that uh, I think that goes back to 2003, 2004. Uh, that killed many, many people. Um, now, the SARS virus was the first indication to the Chinese people that someone was out to get them. The SARS virus was genetically engineered uh, to uh, infect Asian people, uh, preferably. And the Chinese realized this. And so since that time, they have actually been on the defensive. Now the question is whether this latest virus is also a bioweapon engineered to destroy people of Asian descent. And it seems to have another feature. It seems to preferentially infect men as opposed to women. Seems to be much more lethal in men than women. And even though it's considered to be a respiratory virus that causes a respiratory illness, the other interesting factor is that it seems to have a predilection for male testicles. Uh, and even in those that recover, the question is, will they be sterilized as after uh, this COVID infection, even if they survive? Uh, Bill Gates, along with Dr. Lieber and Johns Hopkins University in October of 2019, uh, conducted a simulation, computer simulation, of a coronavirus outbreak, uh, and they determined through computer simulations that such an outbreak would lead to the death of 65 million people. Now, the current experience in China with a 2.3% mortality rate shows that globally we could expect at least 165 million deaths uh, from this virus. So what is it all for? I think it's for uh, the purpose of slowing down the growth of China as a dominant economic, political, and economic power in the world. That is, of course, if it really is a bioweapon. Um, if it's not really a bioweapon, it certainly has taken the U.S.-China trade war to another level. Trade war has become biological warfare, and people are being uh, targeted uh, with their lives. Part of the trade war, of course, was the controversy with a company called Huawei, the leaders in 5G technology. The center of 5G technology is China, and the center of 5G technology in China is Wuhan City, or Wubei, in Wubei province. And when they turned on or switched on the most uh, potent 5G network in the world, in Wuhan City, that's when the epidemic broke out. 
So there are scientists who think that there is an electronic component to what would otherwise just be a biological phenomenon. A virus is on the borderline of living things versus non-living things. It is protein wrapped around genetic material, either RNA or DNA. It is susceptible to electronic frequencies. Viruses can be activated by 5G 60 cycle frequency radiation that was turned on in Wuhan city that co just coincidentally happened at the same time as a viral outbreak. Could there be a connection? One final point that I think the world should consider. From my point of view as a medical doctor, someone who knows a little bit about public health, I don't think that the Chinese government could be faulted in any way for their response to whatever happened, whether it was a natural phenomenon or whether it turns out to really be a bio attack. But their response to it uh, was heroic and correct. They built three 1,000 bed hospitals in a little more than a week. That is phenomenal. They provided hospital care for thousands of people who otherwise would have been left out in the cold to die. And so this is something to ponder. Is the United States capable of the same response, public health wise? Is Europe capable of the same response? Is Africa, is India, are the other nations, are Brazil and other nations in South America and throughout the world? Is Japan, Korea, are they capable of the same heroic, monumental public health measures undertaken by the Chinese? Who seem, I mean, optimistically I'm speaking now, they seem to have contained uh, the spread of the virus in China through these drastic means. Uh, but suppose you had the same level of infection in New York City or Los Angeles or Chicago or some other major city in Europe. As we now see in Italy and Spain and Germany, cases breaking out. Well, this is the tip of the iceberg. 80 some cases now in Long Island, New York, uh, in Los Angeles, in Texas and other places people under quarantine. Uh, we don't know how many people are really infected because the CDC has only given a little more than 400 tests total. So if they're reporting 50 or 60 cases, that sounds like a small number, and it is, but you'd only tested 400 people. So how can you be sure about the total number of infections in the country? You can't be. So all precautions must be in order. Facial masks are not going too far. Frequent hand washing is not going too far. Avoiding contact with public surfaces is not going too far. Avoiding public uh, gatherings is not going too far. We don't actually know the full characteristics of what we're dealing with, but we must take those things into consideration uh, that we are learning, you know, uh, where these outbreaks are taking place throughout the world. Uh, a, a weak Clorox solution, a cap full of Clorox in a gallon of water, can be used as a disinfectant on surfaces. I use essential oils mixed in water, things like geranium, for me geranium, and um, uh, other essential oils, eucalyptus, camphor. Uh, these essential oils mixed in water, sprayed uh, in a house, will keep germs at bay. Uh, these are old-fashioned, traditional methods. I think the Public Health Service in America. Uh, is so decrepit uh, and disabled uh, that every American citizen um, should consider you're on your own and you have to do what you can do to protect yourself and your family uh, because I don't think that the government agencies are going to be able. They're not equipped. The hospitals don't have the space to accommodate you. So you're going to have to accommodate yourself. Well, the question about whether or not uh, this COVID-20 um, the coronavirus is natural or man-made. Uh, I think that the fact that it is man-made is beyond question right now. I think the, the, the genetic sequences that have been done uh, throughout the world shows that um, it did not have a natural origin. You can't naturally combine HIV genes with uh, coronavirus genes. That just doesn't happen in nature. However, um, 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 nature is capable of, of things that we may not be able to conceive of. 
So for example, uh, one of the things that people are becoming aware of are the tremendous number of deaths that take place every year from ordinary influenza. In the United States, for example, every year you will have between 30 and 40,000 deaths from regular influenza. Uh, and that's considered to be normal. And it could even range higher than that, 60, 70,000 per year. And some years lower than that. So we have good seasons and bad seasons. This is from influenza. Well, where did the influenza virus come from? I'm using this as an example for all viruses. Where did they come from? Well, if you uh, have, uh, as you do in China, a situation where you have uh, population congestion, congestion, you have human beings living in close proximity with animals. You have human beings living in close proximity to pigs and ducks and chickens. And so the history of influenza is that this is a virus that naturally recombined to produce something that can cause human disease. A bird virus infects a duck in a pond in China. That bird virus uh, gets picked up by a pig who drinks from that pond water. And then that virus recombines inside the body of the pig so that it begins to infect the pig. A bird virus, in other words, has now jumped into a pig. And then who lives right next to the pig or who ends up eating the pig or slaughtering the pig is a human being. And so now an original bird virus that somehow was able to infect the pig now makes a second leap, species leap, you could say, into a human being. And now a bird virus that became a swine virus is now a human virus, and we call it influenza. And it has been plaguing the world ever since people thought it was a good idea to live in close proximity to a food source like ducks and pigs. So it's possible, it's remotely possible, that this novel coronavirus is a natural virus, like they say. It came from a meat market in China. It came from bats, it came from this, it came from that. Well, that sounds like the green monkey story uh, related to HIV. And then it turns out green monkeys had very little to do with HIV. Uh, human bio molecular engineers had everything to do uh, with, the, with the development of HIV as a biological weapon. And I think the, the, that the evidence is very strong right now and I think the proof positive will come in the future. This was a biologically engineered weapon, probably done by Dr. Lieber and his team from Harvard University in conjunction with Johns Hopkins University and with Wuhan University in China and other government agencies in China. They developed this. They will have to explain to the world why they thought this